going to start off by showing uh, a short video, um, and then we'll do a quick presentation, and then we're going to have a panel. With rapid urbanization, we continue to build cities that are net contributors to the very problems we seek to solve. What do we do? The concept of smart city platform, driven by matured capabilities of telcos to act as enabler in solving the current and future challenges faced by fellow citizens, city municipal authorities, and aspiring local business an innovative and agile open platform for bringing all fragmented smart city services available in the city under a unified platform. Some city benefits of the platform are improved livability, enhanced sustainability, economic prosperity. Smart city platform will provide telco new revenue streams from new digital services. This platform will create a seamless marketplace for all service providers without investing huge capital and operational cost. It will also help in optimal usage of vital infrastructure in the city. The unified smart city platform will ensure the happiness of citizens and new revenue opportunities for service providers. It is the first platform of its kind to combine smart city services. So, as you can see, we're, we're talking about building a platform which will generate a marketplace for smart cities. Um, Saudi Telecom has been the main sponsor for the Catalyst, and they have, uh, they've done a really great job um, helping us to see the, the problem space and understand the issues that they're facing. Um, you can see uh, from this quote from their group CEO uh, that you know, the usage of technology within the, mar the smart city marketplace is, uh, is a really key concern for them. It's one of the driving factors leading telcos to move into the smart city area. And so as part of this catalyst, what we were trying to do is look at how we could uh, figure out a business model that makes sense. And that drives us to having a platform, but also using the two-sided business model to bring uh, suppliers and consumers within a smart city together. We also um, took into consideration the thoughts of uh, s some of the organizations that are enabling smart cities. Um, again, this is a, uh, an organization in uh, Saudi that is, um, is uh, faced with challenges around smart cities and bringing those solutions to smart cities. And they are uh, very interested in the, the kind of solution that we've uh, been proposing and may actually be uh, useful or participate in the future phases of the catalyst. So if we look at the drivers um, to why we actually came up with the idea of this um, having an open platform and uh, the uh, two-sided business model, uh, basically in the cities we see that they, they have a need for a platform which will provide all the smart city services. The moment everything is very siloed and fragmented. so giving them a common um, service agnostic platform that they can use is, is one of the, the key factors. Um, from a DSP perspective, you know, uh, leveraging that uh, infrastructure base that they already have is very key. Um, they have a lot of uh, the capabilities that are needed for a smart city platform already in place. And we'll get to those in the, on the following slide. Um, also from a DSP perspective, the uh, move to newer technologies, so 5G is obviously uh, a big um, driver for some of the smart city capabilities. And um, you know, a city needs to be able to use the resources that they have and uh, very efficiently. And this open platform that's agnostic to the services is uh, key to that. So if we look at the, the money involved in this, obviously there is money there. Um, some of the analysis we've done, 223 billion uh, by 2023. Um, we see a lot of spend by cities and uh, telcos in this area. Um, so reusing some of the infrastructure that's already there is obviously a, a really good idea. 
Um, if we look at the platform itself, uh, you know, from a telco perspective, there's a lot of capabilities that are already there. So customer relationship management, uh, analytics, managing partners and contracts, um, a system of trust. Uh, these, these capabilities are part of the infrastructure that a telco already typically has in place. Um, and we're looking at adding or utilizing these in uh, a business model, which I said was a uh, two-sided, uh, multi-sided uh, scenario, bringing together suppliers and consumers. And obviously, the, uh, building this on top of TMF open standards is a, is a good approach. Just gonna move forward. So the, uh, the actual, why, why should telcos actually be the, the provider of this uh, open platform? So obviously they have uh, existing customers, they have loyalty with those customers. Um, those are typically the customers who are making use of the smart city services. Um, we do look at some scenarios where multiple service providers can be involved in a kind of a roaming scenario. Um, so that's something that we can talk about more if you come to the booth. Uh, obviously reusing this technology I've, uh, and, and infrastructure, I've mentioned that before. And you know, uh, telcos are very interested in getting into uh, new kind of uh, revenue streams. So this provides a, an access for that. And building it all on top of these standards and frameworks that are out there that TMF has uh, provided is very good. So we really see this as a kind of win-win-win situation for all the, the stakeholders. So the service providers get to reuse that infrastructure. Um, they uh, can access a new revenue stream. The smart city service providers uh, get a clear channel to their uh, consumers. Uh, the citizens get access to much more services and uh, the city um, has new and innovative types of services, so that's really good. And basically everybody gets a better reuse of the, uh, the resources that are involved. So the, uh, the part participants uh, are uh, Tata Consulting Cer Services, Oracle, Cognizant, Sigma, and SDC, as I mentioned, is the champion. Uh, we've done a lot of collaboration around this, and obviously we've um, involved a lot of uh, uh, high-level uh, management and, and experts in this analysis. Uh, we've done 60-plus meetings. We've been all over the map as far as time zones and things are concerned. Um, and we've produced a white paper, uh, which actually we can provide links to. So at the moment, we're really in the inception phase. So coming up with white paper, doing the analytics, the analysis. Um, in the next phase of the project, we're really gonna look into doing more of an implementation. But the real goal for the Catalyst is actually to uh, build and monetize this platform and come up with a really serious example of how it can be utilized and implemented with a, a partner like SDC. So we're gonna go into some of the questions and answers now. Okay, so the first question to Imran. Uh, what does SCOP provide to an aspiring smart city? And what is SCOP in your remarks? Okay, so uh, see basically you would have seen a lot of uh, SCOP as part of the presentation. Uh, what we mean by SCOP over here is a platform. It's an open platform. Now the whole idea for this particular uh, uh, catalyst is not building a smart city. We don't want to build a smart city. We want to build a platform that will support smart city. And also important point to note over here is it's not a smart city that the platform supports. We can have multitude of smart cities that can use the same platform, which means you leverage the economies of scale, you bring down the cost, your operation costs are low. This is what a SCOP does. It's a service provider. Okay, We provide services wherein, you know, a smart city services can be hoisted at a marginal cost that the telco takes or the service provider takes for the scope maintenance is, is the only cost uh, that the service provider has to deal with. So now with the scope coming into the picture, there are two things very clear. The service provider, the smart city service provider concentrates only on the services. He does not worry about any of the peripheral 
uh, applications, updates, securities, things like that. And uh, the SCOP is built on principles of uh, security and trust. So uh, as part of the SCOP, one thing that is very clear is going to be the security of the data that the customer comes in with. So this is going to be one of the key pillars uh, while building the SCOP. And this is what SCOP offers. It's, it's a platform. It's not a smart city, but it's a platform where smart cities can come in uh, and start using these services. And it also gives you the ability for a quick marketing, because a uh, quick time to market, because it's, it's a platform. That is what uh, existing platforms do. So it's already running. You already have services running on it. Best of class, best of breed technologies being involved. And one of the key things that we try to see is, uh, you know, if it's, it's a telco or an existing service provider, we can leverage up to 65% of their existing infrastructure and the services that can be used. So this is, this is what the SCOP brings to you. And this is what makes us different from what is being offered today. OK, a question for uh, Velu. Um, so why do you believe that telcos are a fit to assume the role of smart city enablers? And what's the required investment? Yeah, that's a good question. If we look at it, that the SCOP, that is the smart city open platform from telco, that is entirely built by reusing the assets, that is the state of art applications, which telco already possess to build this platform. So the almost the operational or the capex for this platform is negligible. Whereas if you consider that the smart city or the city authority or the municipality builds up a platform to build a smart city service, then it has its own, they have to focus on procuring all these applications and the capex associated with that and reutilizing this across the various cities would be very minimal. Whereas if it is being provided by as a service from the telco, there is a very good choice that is the, it has the state of art applications, whatever we name it, the telco already possess all this existing applications, they have it. Also, if you see the volume of data that is being handled by the telcos, it's huge or enormous by today. So managing a city data effectively is not a big deal for the telco. So in that way, telcos are positioned as a very good player to provide such a platform as a service. Additionally, if you look at it, for all of this, the data is the backbone. That is the connectivity which is being provided by the telco. So they can cross bundle such services and increase their revenue opportunities. While the other service providers, that is the smart city service providers, the local businesses who wanted to aspire and do their more business on this, they can focus on their services, that is their core services. No need to focus on the building a platform or application and taking care of the other services. So additionally, as Imran explained, the telco possess the 360 degree view of that data as well. So it's very much easy to take this as a service from the telco rather than some other players building it. If you see the other factors, the security breach for any of the data from the telco is very negligible today. Whereas if you see the other platform players, that's any social media or any of this, the security breach is quite high or the customers also have reluctancy to share their personal data with the third party providers. So that way we see that telcos are good positioned to have this service provided. So that's the thing. Okay, uh, question for Bader now. So, uh, smart city service discovery uh, it can be a bit challenging, especially if you've got a number of service providers in the smart city that are cooperating. Uh, how does SCOP handle that? Okay, so in an average city, you'd have thousands of, or even hundreds of thousands of services scattered around the place. So one of the biggest challenges you find in smart cities is service discovery. I want to park my car, for instance, but I don't know if there is a parking solution around with me. So what we are proposing here is something similar to uh, Foursquare for smart cities. So you get curated, tailored content to you over the TMF679. So we extended the uh, TMF API 679 to include things such as location as well as uh, look-alike analysis. So when you open the app and you have a demo of that as well, you'll only get the curated content that has been tailored to your time of day as well as character as well as look-alike analysis. So if it's your first time to use the app, we'll use look-alike analysis and provide you with curated data that is relevant to the location you're in. So this solves the issue of uh, discovery, services discovery, and limits the amount of services that you might get. 
So currently in smart city solutions that are available, if you get one of the available smart city apps, once you open the services section, you'll find tens or even hundreds of items. And you need to navigate through all of that to find the one that is suitable to you. You might even find a parking spot that is like 10 kilometers away from you. It doesn't make sense. So this is what we're doing. We even took it to the next level and we're providing behavior-based suggestion. So again, in the demo that we have, the app detects that you're looking for a parking spot. And without even actually ordering a parking spot, you find a pop-up on your phone asking you if you're actually looking for a parking spot. We detected that you're going around in circles and you're offered one. We can even integrate with a digital assistant such as Siri or uh, Google. So all you need to do is ask your uh, digital assistant to provide you with a certain service and it will be provided. Again, this is highly curated and highly tailored to the person consuming the service. Um, that's about what we're doing and you can see more about that in the booth, in the demo. All right, so uh, back to Imran. Uh, how SCOP is different from the existing model in which ser smart service providers have their own apps and how how this platform is different from other platform providers such as uh, Google? So, uh, like I, I said earlier, we're not here to reinvent the smart city. Okay. We're here to build a platform, and that is the key difference that this work, uh, that this call brings in. One of the key things that we have to understand, uh, uh, and the key differentiator uh, that we offer over here in terms of the SCOP is uh, the way we look at it. Okay, SCOP is designed using uh, open APIs, standards, which give you uh, a multitude of connectivity within this, the telco ecosystem and also outside the telco ecosystem. Okay, which makes it very different. Today, uh, you know, smart cities, you, you have a lot of, lot of uh, services being offered uh, as part of smart cities. Every service operator has their own ecosystem. They are, they're spending more time, more money in setting up the ecosystem. And for the end user, this means uh, multiple bills coming in, multiple uh, parties to deal with, multiple channels to deal with, multiple apps to deal with. The SCOP is centralized. It's a unified open platform. And it's being run by the telco. Uh, and telco business is one of the most complex and uh, one of the it, it's supposed to be the most established uh, processes and systems in place. So we are suggesting that the telco is, is, is the key provider for such a service and they, they make the difference over here. They bring in their expertise, they bring in the processes which exist and this is what makes it different from the existing and the other uh, service providers. We also have companies like Google, uh, Alphabet uh, getting into this space because this is a very lucrative space. You saw the numbers in the slide. We're talking of 200 plus billion dollars, uh, which is out uh, open to be grabbed. So everybody wants a pie. But then uh, we all need to know that uh, there's a lot of data harvesting that happens. Data harvesting for good and bad. And we are all skeptical of sharing our data or our personalized information. As a scop, uh, this is where uh, the key difference comes in. Like I started off saying, uh, one of the pillars of the SCOP is, is the data, is trust and security. Okay, that's what we offer. Since it's a platform, you will have multiple uh, service providers outside the platform utilizing it. This is what makes it different. The platform will not share the customer information to the service provider. It's just another entity that you have to deal with. It's just another customer coming to the store. You do not know what the customer is taking. All the data aggregation, AI, ML, all the machine learning happens on the SCOP platform. And it is unified and kept within the platform. This is one of the key differences that, that we offer uh, than the traditional smart city services uh, open today. Okay, so two really quick last questions. So, uh, let me just find them. So, better. there are other TMF catalysts, obviously, working in the smart city domain. So, how would you say our catalyst uh, distinguishes itself from them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, if you go around the catalyst this year, you find that there are at least five or six catalysts working in the same domain. And this is, as Imran said, it's justifiable. There is a lot of money here to be earned. And there is a lot of ease to be provided to the citizens. As a matter of fact, cities or smart cities have been falling behind. 
smart cities were expected to come into play much earlier. With all of these catalysts, each of them is handling a <coughs> vertical solution. They're picking a problem and solving it well. So I have, for instance, smart tourism downstairs. Very nice solution. Again, it's verticalized. What we're offering here is an extension to the ODA, the Open Digital Architecture. So our solution come horizontally and would allow any of these solutions to easily provide the same value at a minimal effort. Another advantage that we have here, again, as Amran said, is the amount of investment for a telco to get into this is minimal, negligible, actually. We're building on top of VAS. So if a telco has a value-added services platform, and most telcos do, they just need to add like a 10 more percent, and they'd have it. So that's the differentiation that we have. We're not building something new. We're providing a platform, an open platform, with a standard API extending TMF APIs. We have around 12 or 13 APIs that we intend to extend. That would allow any player to enter the smart city domain at a minimal effort. OK, and one last quick one to uh, Velu. Uh, do you have any commercial opportunities that are available just now? Yes, as explained earlier on Minsan, that is the Akala, the real estate company in Middle East is engaged with us and they are looking forward to enable their smart services using this platform. That is, they will focus on their core business whereas the platform from the telco or from the DSP would provide all the services which is basic, necessary for providing smart city services along with the digital connectivity. So this will be a, another opportunity for telcos to bundle the services that is one for the that is the commercial real estate authorities, they will focus on their services instead of focusing on this one, which will have all the capabilities of Imran and Badr mentioned, that is the trust, engagement, system of records, system of insights and everything to provide the right contextual personalized services to the citizens and enable the revenue share among multiple parties and provide the business, the local business opportunities to provide the economic growth for the city. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes to have questions from the audience, if anybody has one. You can we hear? Hi. Um, from BH Telecom, you asked me. We just have a couple of questions. Uh, this project based on your slides, is it in a planning phase? Which phase are you currently find yourself right now uh, regarding the entire project? One question and another question is, within your business model, since you're coming from telco world, uh, how big a support is city to you or how many participants in the entire project you have and is your business model based on the revenue share between all the, all the stakeholders and all the, all the participants within? And you mentioned services. Are, are all services presented to be as a telco-based services in the first place and then marketed as a smart city initiative or it's from the city to the citizens? Thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, coming back to the first question, that is, we started this catalyst in this year, that is at the start of 2019. So we conceptualized this whole idea in the action week, that is in Lisbon. And so that is where it started. And we are in the early stage of the conceptualizing. That's conceptualization that done. The next phase is to make it commercial. That is where the, we had the question as well. So that is the, I think this answers the first question. So coming to the second one, we are enabling the, providing the platform for the smart city. We are not looking at as a telco providing any smart city services. So this is completely a platform being provided from the telco. That is along with the connectivity services so that the smart city service authorities or providers, they can focus on their business to provide or enrich the quality of service they are providing to the citizens through the catalogs and all the automated way. Similarly, the local business can onboard easily using the TMF open APIs and all. So we are building a standard one side, the next side is this one. While referring that one, in the future we are looking to develop a SDK for this uh, platform so that anybody can redevelop the applications on top of that. For example, if I'm a local business guy, would like to provide a smart city service or reach out to more number of customers in a particular city, I will just connect to this platform using the SDK which will be having already developed applications. I have to just have a minimal investment on my app or local solution, just a minimal investment as a front end. Everything will be integrated through this SDK which will be provided from the telco and all the other business will take a revenue share out of that. So that's it. Okay, one added point if you Please. allow me. Uh, 
in the paper, in the white paper that we wrote, uh, we divided uh, the markets into two aspects, the regulated market and unregulated market, on the service level as well as the city level. So in Aqalat's example, for instance, they are building compounds. They don't want a telco to be directly responsible for the services. So we lease them, so we have two different models here. The first model is you build uh, the SCOT and you operate it. That's unregulated market. Smart city service providers provided through us as a telco. In the other model, you lease the entire platform to a, smart, to a city management authority and they provide the services. There is a spectrum between them. So for instance, the city might decide to provide utilities through their app while the parking should be provided through the telco. So I hope that answers your And on top of that, uh, being a telco, uh, you know, for running any kind of a platform, any kind of a services, you do need connectivity. So these are the primary services that you will sell as a telco on the SCOP. So you talk of utilities. Utility smart metering is the in thing today. Everybody wants to automate. Everybody wants to become smart. But then the meters do need connectivity. Correct. That's provided by the telco. So uh, like Badr said, it's regulated and un unregulated. There is going to be some element of the telco services also involved being sold on the platform. And that's going to be premium services. That's the direct bread and butter and probably uh, the maximum profit yielding uh, services for the telco. Because uh, over a period of time, uh, there's going to be new varied uh, product portfolios that will come out. For example, IoT. Okay. Uh, today, uh, buying a platform for, for IoT is a big cost. Okay. Telco can buy, all telcos have an IoT platform. This platform can be leased. It can be sold as a service. You can have city being sold as a service. Yeah? I hope you answered your uh, question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I think uh, that's it. Come by the booth. Oh, very quick. I think we're right out of time. Yes, uh, actually we are looking at this, actually as you mentioned, the main constraint for the cities are the budget available, that is the capex while building the smart city solution. So it goes very high when they want to build a full solution on their own. So we are building it here and by reutilizing the assets what we already have, that is system of engagement, system of insights, system of records and everything. So this will be provided as a platform as a service to the city. That's the first part. The next thing is the same can be replicated to the other city as well. That is this as a platform. Then your question of about the non-telco customer. For example, if the customer is from other telco or other service provider, how do we envision or make use of their data? So for that, as part of the solution, we had a discussion and that is part for the next phase. That is how, similar to the roaming agreement, how it happens between the service providers. The data will be anonymized and will be taken from the other service providers as well, other telcos as well, to get any insightful about that particular customer, so that we can provide a personalized service to the customer. So okay. We'd like it. to get your insight as well, so please pass, pass by our booth in the first floor. Let's have a discussion. It's, it's always helpful to get the city's point of view. Yeah, yeah so the, the booth is on the floor below, and it's about as far as you can go uh, at the back. <laughs> Feel free to download. Come and look us up. We have the flyer and the brochure as well. Yeah. Uh, please feel free to download them. You'll find more details on what we're doing there. Good. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. A round of applause for our panel, please. Thank you.